What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the Benchmade Proper 318, I believe it's the 318-2 though I'm sure the title will reflect accurately what the actual model number is because I always forget with model numbers and stuff, uh, it's so hard to remember everything. This is the Benchmade Proper uh, that has been upgraded to um, carbon fiber and S90V steel. Um, up from its standard form in S30V steel and red G10 or that sort of OD green tan micarta. So there are actually four different versions of the proper that you can get. Well, there's that's not true. I, there's a blue one as well, but the standard version is um, red. Um, so there's six actually, <laughs> six standard forms. You can get it in sheep's foot or clip point um, in red G10 or that uh, canvasy uh, green micarta, uh, or you can get it in carbon fiber and these um, uh, brass colored liners um, in S90V with a clip point or a sheep's foot. So this is one of the upgraded versions. I technically have already reviewed this knife um, back when it was one of the last reviews I did in my old format. Back when the channel was very new, I was reviewing uh, knives just out of a vehicle. I don't do that anymore, so I'm gonna give this a full review, and it is technically a different knife. This is one of the last ones I did there uh, in my old format, but uh, back when I, I purchased it for my dad. Uh, but uh, anyways, this knife was uh, sent to me by the Apex Passaround Group, so by extension, uh, the manufacturer bench made themselves. Uh, as usual, I'll try not to let that affect my review, but it should be pretty easy considering I do not get to keep this knife. Um, if you've been enjoying my content and you like daily knife content, um, that is made possible by my generous patrons who um, support me and allow me to pay for things like shipping and insurance costs. So if you would like to also support this channel, you can follow the link in my description um, to my Patreon. Have a look around then. If you'd like to, you can join any tier. The, uh, the support would absolutely mean the world to me. Let's go ahead and get a measurement here. From tip to scale, we're looking at about six and a half inches overall. Uh, from tip to the front of the scale on blade length, we're looking at... <sighs> You, you might be able to fudge three inches there, but I'd say that'd be a stretch. To me, it looks like 2.9. Your cutting edge is definitely under, uh, under two and a half. It looks like 2.35, maybe something like that. So definitely a small knife, but just be careful. I mean, I can, in some areas, you could call that a three inch blade. And I know that that's problematic for some people. That bothers me so much someday. I will work up the courage to do a video about knife laws in some areas and some of these lingering ridiculous knife laws, but nah, that's for another day. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons here. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, Rat 1, a much larger knife coming in at 8.6 inches overall, so you can see there, um, this is a gentleman's carry slip joint, so it's obviously going to be substantially smaller. Up against the Spyderco PM2, Spyderco PM2 coming in at about 8.3 inches overall, so again, substantially larger. How about up against a, uh, the Benchmade Drip Cylinder, in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue is coming in at 8 inches overall, so again, substantially larger. How about a little bit smaller, Spyderco Para 3, Spyderco Para 3 coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall, so closer. Let's do one that's more in the same uh, wheelhouse here, the Victorinox Cadet. The Victorinox Cadet is coming in actually smaller at, I always forget because I don't use it as a size comparison often, 5.75 inches overall. So larger than the Victorinox Cadet. How's the action on this guy? Well, this is a uh, slip joint, which means it's non-locking blade. It does have a mid-stop right here and snaps into place. That is exactly how all slip joints should function. I actually, the Victorinox Cadet, the only thing about it that bothers me is it doesn't have a mid-stop. Why is that important? Well, the mid-stop, a lot of us, you know, our first cuts that we ever got with pocket knives were from slip joints. And it's because you get to that kind of foggy, uh, the event horizon <laughs> on a slip joint and it just snaps into place. That mid-stop, when I'm out doing something with a pocket knife, it lets my brain know subconsciously, hey, you're nearing the point where the blade is gonna snap back into the handle. And it's kind of giving you this extra zone to go, hey, 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 buddy, hey. You know, it's like the parking sensors on your car. When you get close to something and it starts beeping and beeping louder and louder and louder, that's kind of like what it is. I like that. Past this point, it has a nice snap back into place. No wiggle or anything like that. It's just, it's gonna snap right in there. So I, I really appreciate that. It's nice and smooth. It's running on phosphor bronze washers. This is not a knife that has to have 
a fall shot, and no knife has to have a fall shot action, but this is a slip joint blade. It, it does exactly what I would expect it to do. Um, these are carbon fiber handles, and it has, I don't think they're actually brass line. I don't know if they're um, titanium liners or not. I think they're steel liners that just are brass colored, but I, I could be wrong about that. Somebody in the comment section always, always corrects me, and people always get mad at me. They're like, you should have looked that up before you did. Okay, sorry. Uh, 2.15 ounces on the weight there. Let's go again. 2.15 ounces. No issue with that whatsoever. It is uh, heavier than the Victorinox Cadet at 1.66 ounces, but it is a little bit bigger. Those of you who subscribe to the idea that blades should be directly corresponding, blade length should directly correspond with ounces, so an ounce an inch, um, that uh, knife falls right into that category. This knife does not have a pocket clip, but I will let you guys know, for those of you who just can't stand to put one of these in your back pocket without a clip, you can easily purchase something like this titanium suspension clip, which I'll try to remember to link in the description um, for about 10 bucks. Yeah, I know you can get them for about $2, but I've heard those are crap, and I'd much rather have something that I can trust to keep my knife in my pocket if I really have to have it clipped there. I think this is a prime candidate, though, I've kind of gotten used to just throwing this guy in my back pocket, um, so I don't have an issue with that. Um, on this particular version, we are uh, looking at the clip point style blade. Like I said, these do come in a sheep's foot configuration. Um, this is about as perfect as a clip point blade as I've ever seen. It's very, very classic. Um, I feel the exact same way about the sheep's foot blade. I'll tell you, I've actually given two different propers as gifts. I gave my dad um, this exact one uh, in S30V and red G10, his favorite color is red, uh, for Father's Day. And I told him, I said, hey, dad, keep this in your truck, use it as a letter opener, whatever you need. This is the perfect knife to just kind of keep on your desk um, uh, or in your truck as just kind of a do whatever you need to do right then in their knife. Um, and I gave it to him the clip point configuration. Then I also gave um, one of these upgraded versions to my buddy, uh, Mitch, who is Endure88 on Instagram, the gentleman who has done all the artwork for the channel. The Metal Knight you guys see is my banner. Uh, the Metal Helmet here that I have um, as one of my Patreon incentive stickers, as well as the actual Metal Complex logo. He's done all of that. He's still working on some other things. The guy is awesome, and I, I surprised him, and I wanted to say thank you. Um, so I got him a uh, carbon fiber and S90V sheep's foot um, Benchmade proper. He is, uh, he was uh, not, he's not a knife guy. You know, I mean, he appreciates cutlery at, at his base form, but I said, hey, um, for what you do, you know, day to day and in his real job, you know, I was like, you don't need any, any hyper tactical, aggressive, like super knife guy kind of thing. You know, a straightforward slip joint's probably going to be the way to go. And I, I purchased him that. So I, um, I, I told him, I said, I, I like this knife. Spoiler alert, I do like this knife. Um, and uh, I wanted, to, wanted him to have that. So I think these make excellent, straightforward gentlemen's carry slip joint knives. Um, there, there are a lot of elements that they just did exactly right. We're going to go over everything here. As far as the finish goes in the blade, this is Benchmade's typical tumbled finish, which I think just looks excellent. Um, that's really cool. This is S90V steel, and let me tell you, um, S90V is not a tough steel. It is a stainless steel, and it has ridiculous edge retention. It's one of the best edge retentive steels out there. So these qualities are exemplified in small blades that are not designed to be used during tasks that would require a lot of toughness or impact, you know, resistance or anything like that. These blades are designed to cut. They're designed to cut, you know, materials that are, you know, softer or not nearly as hard as the steel and then for elongated periods of time or over a long period of time. What better style of knife to exemplify those traits than a small gentleman's carry EDC uh, slip joint. I think this is one of the best examples of S90V in terms of size and overall blade geometry that I've ever seen. You have a blade stock thickness, and that goes for S110V as well. I'm not saying if you have a Spyderco PM2 in S110V that, you, that that's a dumb knife to have it on. I'm just saying I, I really like these, these types of super steels on these little tiny knives, you know, to each their own. We have a blade stock thickness of basically nothing. Um, so your actual edge you know, even though it doesn't have a lot of room to drop towards the cutting edge, you actually come to a pretty thin cutting edge. This is going to be a pretty slicey little blade. Fantastic for, you know, little package opening jobs, letter opening jobs. I mean, this is just the quintessential, just simple EDC gentlemanly folding knife. Uh, really like that. They've done a good job making sure that none of these edges are sharp and that your edge 
Um, there's a little bit of debris here from whoever used it on a package before it got to me. Um, but your edge is nice and clean. Um, a lot of people say things like, oh, Benchmade has the, well, I say a lot of people, I've said that before. Benchmade has had quality control issues in the past, but guys, I said this in the comments section the other day, the last you know, five to 10 Benchmade knives that I've handled, especially their newer models, they seem to have taken, you know, maybe, maybe it's just the one, maybe it's just like the last five to 10 that I handled were like the best examples I could have handled. But from my perspective, it seems like Benchmade is doing something to up their quality control game. Fit and finish on the last few that I've handled is excellent. Just want to throw that out there. Um, but anyways, yeah, nice all the way around. I have no idea why they put jimping on the blade here. There's no reason to bear down on the blade right here because it doesn't lock. <laughs> so, okay, but there is jimping back here on the handle, so perhaps it's just an extension that makes it look aesthetically nice. You can bear down on this knife back here, but don't bear down on the knife up here. That's not a good idea. You're gonna cut your finger. Uh, I like where Benchmade puts their logo. I like that it says S90V. The blade is perfect other than this area right here. I also really enjoy the position of the nail nick. You can pinch it open or you can stick your fingernail in there and open it up. Um, I'm not a slip joint expert though, guys, so I may get some of these things wrong. The carbon fiber is slightly contoured. It's also nicely rounded off all the way around and it looks absolutely beautiful. Carbon fiber, you know, it's not my, it's not my material of choice on an EDC style knife like on my pair of three that I carry all the time. But on a small gentleman's carry, um, Slip joint, yeah, I would I would prefer it over G10. I think it looks nice. It goes with the style. I really like it. Um, this is not a knife that you can get a, a real four finger position grip on, but it does have a comfortable three finger position grip and it's one of the few knife styles that I'm okay with. I always talk about, I wanna get my hand all the way around it. A slip joint, I kind of expect it to be a two to three finger position knife. So I'm okay with that. It makes sense to me. I don't need to have this type of purchase on it because I don't expect to be doing anything that would require that serious of a grip. This is the type of knife I'm gonna go, oh yeah, sure, uh, you know, uh, Gertrude, you need your bag of pretzels opened? Yeah, no problem, or what? That's not how I would open a bag of pretzels, but you guys get what I'm saying. I don't need to grip it that hard. I'm just doing something simple and then putting it away. So I'm okay with that. Um, back here, you can see this uh, back sock or, you know, essentially the back spacer that creates the uh, friction that allows the blade to snap into place, the mid stop and then snap down into position when it's in the handle um, is nice and flush. Everything is nice and even. It looks nice. I love the contrast between the, um, the uh, metallic uh, finish on the steel back here, um, these sort of bronzy liners and then the carbon fiber. This is super classy looking. I love it. Nice little lanyard hole back here, which will do much better if you're going to use it to just attach a key ring and attach a, um, a suspension clip like I showed earlier. Um, that's nice that that's there. Here's my favorite thing about this. It's a slip joint that's not pinned, which means you can adjust it despite it being, are these all T6? Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, they're all T6. Listen, I don't. you guys know I don't like T6. I don't care on a slip joint. I, I, don't, I just don't care. It doesn't matter to me. If I need to take this knife apart, um, I've seen takedown videos of this. It's pretty easy. We've got uh, the pivot and then a couple of Chicago screws back here. A couple of screws right here. You pull this side of the pivot out and bam, you're on the inside. Um, you've got two scales. You've got two liners. And then there's some phosphor bronze washers on the inside of here, which can we see? Yeah, you can kind of see. I don't know. Can you guys see? Yeah, there they are. Phosphor bronze washers on the inside. Fantastic. Fantastic. Are you serious? That's great. You can make the little adjustments and keep this thing cleaned out. And oh my gosh, talk about a slip joint style knife that is designed to, to last. You know, that's the thing. I mean, dig around in your junk drawer in your kitchen. Or, you know, if you've got storage boxes from your parents or your grandparents, guarantee you you're going to find an old slip joint knife somewhere. You know, a, a case or a, um, a whatever. Uh, and now they're made differently now, but most of them uh, use pins. They're brass pins and then over time um, that, uh, that metal warps and the frame warps and expansion and contraction occurs and there's corrosion, whatever. That's, time will destroy everything, but those pins, what, it, what ends up happening inevitably is there's, there's play. I'll actually use my first pocket knife, which I still have, which is a, I always forget, uh, my very first knife, uh, Camilla's. 
and yeah, there's blade play and these pins come out and the scales come out of the, come off of it. I mean, what am I gonna do here unless I wanna take it to a jeweler or uh, you know, somebody who restores pocket knives, I guess. And that's, I mean, that's not necessarily saying that I should expect every knife to last as long as it did. I mean, in all fairness, that knife was my grandpa's um, when he was younger and he gave it to my dad and then my dad gave it to me. And then it finally, the scale finally came off of it and I didn't maintain it or anything like that. But what I'm saying is, is this deal here with the screw setup where you can adjust things, take it apart and clean it. Um, yeah, that's gonna ensure, at least if you wanna do the maintenance, that this thing lasts as long as possible. Um, now, I haven't made any adjustments to this. It's slightly off center, but uh, it's slightly, slightly off center to the right, ever so slightly. And since the adjustment head is on the left, that tells me that if I tighten it down just a little bit, it'll pull the thing back centered. Every proper that I've handled has been centered and it has had zero blade play. And I have a Benchmade dealer in town, so I've handled quite a few beyond the two that I've handled, um, giving to my friend and my dad and this version here. That's impressive for such a small knife. I have like almost no complaints about this thing. I can wave off the T6 screws. I'm gonna even wave off the weird jimping back here because as long as you're smart enough to keep your fingers back here, it's no big deal. This is, God dang, this is one of my favorite newer Benchmade knives. It's such a good knife. The only problem with this version of it is it's a little bit expensive. Yes, it is 100% USA made. Uh, yes, we're looking at carbon fiber that has been contoured. We are looking at excellent fit and finish, and we're looking at an ultra premium steel, S90V. But it's $200. $200 is a lot of money. It doesn't matter what you're looking at. $200, right? We're a little high. Um, I think I would accept, like, I still, I wanted to get my friend and my dad knives that I think, uh, you know, that they would like and that were very useful. I think that the proper itself is ever so slightly overpriced, and I think this ultra premium version is more overpriced, but it's not so overpriced that it's like kicking the groin, you know? It's just a little high. I would accept 180. This knife would make perfect sense to me at about 160 to 165. It's just a little bit high. But rest assured, I'm still gonna recommend this knife. Absolutely, this knife is definitely going in my most recommended knives playlist. And I know a lot of you are like, what, you just did that most overrated knives video and you said the 940 in freaking carbon fiber and, and S90V was massively overpriced at like 270, it's only 70 more and you get an access lock on that and it locked. Yeah, I, I still do think that one's massively overpriced. I would do a lot better with that knife at about $200 and this knife at about 165. But do I think it's absolutely outrageous? No, it's just kind of, but you know, it didn't stop me from purchasing this as a gift and giving it to a friend. So I'm not gonna tell you guys that it's not worth it. I can still recommend a knife. Um, it's, it's gonna go on my most recommended knives playlist. Just know, you know, it, it is a little, the, the price is a little, but you're gonna enjoy it for years and years and years to come. And if this is the type of thing you're looking for, if you're looking for an ultra classy, long lasting, dependable EDC slip joint, right? Where the end user was absolutely taken into consideration. You know, I mean that, the whole, all of the consideration. Um, then this is gonna bring you a lot of happiness. Guys, that's gonna be pretty much it for today's uh, review and overview. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you're enjoying my content, um, you know, please do check out my Patreon. That support really would mean the world to me. There's also down in the description, of course, an Amazon affiliate link where you can purchase this knife for yourself and at the same time support me, as well as some other really cool EDC items and uh, the tools that I use to maintain my own knives. So whether you're purchasing that stuff for yourself or a loved one or somebody you're just trying to get into the EDC or knife world this holiday season, uh, for whatever reason, um, that, that'll support me. So I would, I would really appreciate that. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I don't like. So please check that stuff out. And if you enjoy all my content, then go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.